Welcome to this demonstration of the Liberty HD termination system where you can field terminate your own HD cables for HDMI applications. Before you start assembling your HDMI connector and cables, you want to make sure you have all your components to your connectors. There are seven pieces. So in your first step, you're going to be actually using the cable sleeves. You have the black cable sleeve for your large ribbon and your white cable sleeve for the small ribbon. You're going to have your connector body itself, which has the IDC termination contacts into it. Then you're going to have your upper connector shell, which is the gold unit. Your lower connector shell, which is going to be placed over the upper, locked into place and crimped. Then you're going to have your lower hood, which is marked by the HDMI logo. And then the last step will be snapping on the upper hood, which is the Liberty logo. This is a representation of the tools required. You'll need the crimp tool, which is used to press the connectors together. You'll need a ruler, it can be either English or metric. A pair of electrician scissors is very handy to have. A hobby knife to separate your foil. And then a pair of diagonal cutters to cut your cable. The specific cable that we have is our Liberty HDMI high speed cable. This is a unique cable design that uses two flat ribbon cables inside the jacket in order to ensure HDMI performance. Your first step with this cable is going to be to prepare the cable. In order to do this, you need to measure out a one and a half inches or 40 millimeters. And then you want to go ahead and strip this jacket off. So using a knife, you can go ahead and rotate the jacket around and then pull off your jacket slug. You're going to be left with a braided shield you want to take this braided shield and fold it back over the jacket, kind of like turning a sock inside out. Now you need to remove this overall foil shield. The best way of doing this is kind of rotate the cable a little bit and you'll find a seam pop out. When you find this seam, you can track the seam all the way back down to the bottom of the jacket and you want to just go ahead and nick it down there and then you can go ahead and grip it and pull it right off. That piece of foil can then be discarded. Now we're left with the actual two ribbon cables all cabled together. You want to unfold these and flatten them out. And there's a cotton filler right down the middle of this. You can go ahead and cut that filler off. So pull that filler off to one side, take a pair of diagonal cutters or scissors, clip that filler off. The next step is going to be removing these two foil shields that you see on these ribbon cables. There's an actual uh, seam in that you can't see right now in this and you want to identify that seam and trace this down. So flattening out your end, you want to take your hobby knife and go ahead and just separate without damaging the ribbon cable the foil from the actual cable itself. So once you get it separated a little bit and then you can start pulling it and rotating it around the cable and you can see here there's a seam. It's pulling right down the cable. So you want to go ahead and separate that seam all the way down to the end of the cable. You can take your diagonal cutters and just nick the foil down at the bottom and then you can rotate and peel that foil off all the way around the flat ribbon cable. This is slightly bonded, so it has a tape uh, mechanism to it to keep it in place. And there's your bonded foil, you can remove that. You want to repeat this action with the second leg. Again, you want to try to find that seam. Once it's all the way down, you can go ahead and nick it with the diagonal cutters again and remove that foil. Next step is on the black cable sleeve, you want to remove the outermost conductor from the actual ribbon cable and then peel the insulation off of it. So the easiest way to do this is lay the cable down on a nice flat surface, take your hobby knife, find your slot on that last one and just gently slice this down and take that last conductor and just peel it off. You can use a hobby knife to nick the insulation and pull it or you can use your fingernail to do it also. You have to be gentle when you're using your fingernail because the wire is very small, 30 gauge wire, it can break. Just remove all the insulation off the cable. And once your wire is stripped of all insulation, then you want to go ahead and wrap that around the braid shield. So next step here is these cable ends. You can see they're a little rough right here from the original cutting. I want to take a pair of scissors and kind of trim those out. I want to make them uh, probably a little bit at an angle like so. So I'll have the top of the uh, cut angle here. I'm cutting it at an angle for a reason. It helps it to feed into the sleeve better. The black marked conductor is going to go into the black sleeve. So the white marked conductor is going to go into the white sleeve. The cable sleeve has a little arrow on it to signify pin number one. This little arrow is going to line up with your colored conductor on your flat ribbon cable. And I want to grip the cable, actually the cable sleeve, by the lateral sides when I feed this in here. Well, once I have this on here, I'll go ahead and slide this up the cable. 
Now I'll do the same thing with the other cable. Again, using the colored conductor as the point. The white sleeve also has an arrow on it signifying pin number one. Slide this on and pull this up. Now these two units here have what we call IDC termination guide slots on these so that the IDC slots are lined up. And I want to make sure both my white and black sleeves are even with each other. Next step is to remove your excess flat ribbon cable. Taking your tool, you have what we call a cutoff slot here and slot number one. There's a silhouette of the sleeve on the slot. You can use the silhouette against the silhouette of the actual sleeve itself. So I'm going to go ahead and place this in ID sleeve slots down, crimp. There's my extra cable cut off. Same thing with the white. Just make sure it's seated all the way up in there and crimp. The connector body, if you can see in the picture here, has one pin that's recessed compared to the other pins. All the pins are even and then one drop down. That is the white side. So now taking this for the white side, I'm going to line this up and you'll feel it kind of drop in this place. There's an orientation tab on the side here that has to meet the slot that's inside the sleeve. So I'll give that a gentle squeeze just to get it started and I'll do the same thing with the black one. I'll go ahead and line that up. I'll place this into slot number two and then just press and now my termination is complete and I have a fully terminated connector. Next step in this process is the upper sleeve, which is the gold component. I want to go ahead and put my connector in here. It has to be lifted just a little bit to get past the lip. You want to make sure that you feel that click because then that means your connector body is fully locked in. So once that's in place, then I'm going to take my lower shell, place this in here. There's four little tabs on the sides. And now I have my shield cable strain relief here. I want to go ahead and pinch this with my fingers just to start this. The crimp tool in slot number three has another crimping operation. You can see the silhouette of the connector on there. I want to go ahead and place this in here and I'm going to crimp. So I've actually got this now crimped across the cable and the shield, so I have good shield contact there. The next step after you put your uh, upper shell and lower shell together is to trim off the extra braid shield. So using a pair of electrician scissors or diagonal cutters, trim around. You want to make sure you have no loose pieces of braid stuck in here that can cause a problem with your circuitry. And once all your braid is trimmed off, do the final assembly of the actual shell itself. So using the lower shell, I'm going to go ahead and lay the connector in here. Now the upper shell with the Liberty logo will fit over this. And there is your final terminated HDMI connector.